week's incredulous installment will feature commentary from comrades Scott, Joe, Sarah, Kava, and myself. We begin with some conspiracy theorizing and then delve into the news. The liberals' love for law, the relationship between drugs and capital, Teamsters' leadership post Hoffa, and supply-side climate change. I then give an abridged Narcan training, and Hava introduces us to a rich-ass dog with a nice-ass house. This episode contains a greater-than-average portion of content pertaining to substance use disorders and indecent sexual behavior, so there's your warning. No one's thinking like, yeah, my neighbor, Tom, I told him not to take out this mortgage. It doesn't activate that, but some sense that like... If you're in this economy that guarantees security to nobody, Mm -hmm. you're either in one of these positions. You're either someone who's dependent on someone else, or you defend yourself by talking about what you produce. I don't know how I feel about Zizek. I spent a long time narrating a fucking <laughs> book that he wrote for the menagerie and at the end of it i was like eh, fuck this guy <laughs> yeah i mean he's there's like a lot of shit that he's right about he has a very good concept of the problems but like he proposes no solutions he's just <laughs> such a fucking nihilist it sounds like a an academic marxist i mean can analyze the problems without really offering many solutions i've talked about this before but anyways that's what Lenin was for, though. Like, Marx identified the problems, and Lenin described the first comprehensive plan for implementing a solution. And Zizek is no Lenin. Well, if you try really hard, I'm sure he could be. <laughs> nope. <laughs> In what Surround way? You, Jack Kennedy. You're no Jack Kennedy. That would remind me of I was extremely confused because I was driving home from upstate New York, and I was in that kind of, like, dead zone that's in between... Um, Life and... Albany and And well no it's kind of in between anything past like Springfield it's kind of like sketchy oh yeah I know exactly what you're talking about on my way back I was like let's listen to AM radio stations (laughs) that was the worst unless you're listening to coast to coast AM there's no reason I was extremely confused because they're talking about JFK for some reason and then I heard like well because the assassination the the no, anniversary no, no. They of the were, like, assassination talking is... about like QAnon and JFK oh. and I was like how are these related Well JFK is a central figure to QAnon JFK Jr is It is? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, really? Okay, famous okay. They think he's still alive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is known that JFK did want to dismantle to some degree the surveillance state and the CIA. And that's a lot of the theories that's is why, why they fucking he was assassinated. Them. Yeah, it's because he wanted to dismantle the CIA. And a lot of people believe that JFK Jr. is still alive and is still trying to fight the deep state in his father's legacy. Because it's been this long process of, of Kennedy becoming like a conservative hero when he was actually like, he regretted like the fact that he was a cold warrior and he wanted to like stop doing all that shit. And he wanted to come to terms with, wanted to come to some peaceful terms with the Soviet Union. And he wanted to dismantle the CIA to get there. And that's why they assassinated him. But uh, yeah. listen to the new Chapo. Oliver Stone talks about it. Anyways. It's true. Yeah. So that's the that's why JFK Jr. is a central figure to the QAnon myth mythos. Also because JFK Jr.'s body was never found. Hmm. So, he so that's, like movie, that's like Marvel movie logic where they're like, ah, yes, you did not see them die. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> Star Wars logic. I mean, it's no, anything yeah, that right. kind of gets to that point where you're like... It's comic book logic. Hey, Duncan Idaho, JFK. J- JFK is Duncan Idaho. No, it's the logic of like... I mean... It's like if you're unwilling to look at a systemic problem that implicates your class, you have yeah, to come up with is. a narrative that surrounds like an individual actor that has no class implications. And that's what they yeah. came up with. I think I understand what you mean of them like saying like, oh, it's actually this person who's been secretly fighting behind the scenes. They do that a lot. They're like this secret person yeah. has been fighting behind the scenes to to do the thing. Man. And until they have irrefutable evidence that that's not the case. Imagine and they find like, out that actually this other person was sabotaging them and this other person the is the real. Having the to think that way. That'd be so like liberating. <laughs> it would be liberating. <laughs> Even if you are a member of the working class, it's easier to not confront 
your existing notions of the country that you live in. And it's like easier to adopt the language and ideology of the petty bourgeois Mm -hmm. to placate yourself. And like anybody could just make shit up that's in that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The Apple cool phone is going to come out. It's going to be made of a real Apple. I just made that up. See, it's, it's, it's easy. Fuck you. I think the left needs to embrace like insane conspiracy theories again. Yeah. JFK was killed by the aliens and CIA. Fuck you. Yeah. The aliens got out of Area 51 and then they... Killed him. Yeah. The Harvey Oswald was actually an alien. He was. The Harvey too. Oswald was actually uh, the um, Antichrist. I thought that was Bill Clinton. It was D.B. Cooper. Same man. Anyways, Joe, seriously. <laughs> Get into the news. Yeah, my cut all of that beforehand. <laughs> no, I'm keeping good the good parts. Keep the good parts. Can't fucking tell me what to do. <laughs> so, uh, the expected but bullshit happened this week when Kyle Rittenhouse was oh. acquitted of all charges, which, I mean, it's obviously bullshit because our entire legal system is pretty much bullshit, but it's not, I don't really get why people are surprised because we live in a society in which we have qualified immunity that protects cops from consequ- from murdering people and being held accountable. Yeah. Like, 93% of cops are acquitted of murdering people, even if there is damning video evidence to incriminate them. So, like, in the face of that, why is the outcome in Rittenhouse's trial any surprise? Because he's essentially doing the same thing. Like, obviously, the fact that he murdered two people and got away with it is bullshit, but, like, this sets the legal precedent of essentially expanding... Across state lines and shoot some protesters. Not even across state lines, but, like... It expanded from, <laughs> from cops to basically any paramilitary wannabe cop who just encounters someone they don't like and then shoots them and goes, oh, well, I feared for my life. That's essentially the effect this is going to have. It's like farmers having like shotguns or whatever. It's like if somebody came into their farmhouse with a gun and then they killed the farmer and they're like, I was afraid for my life. Yeah, but the, essentially. The, the, the feral hogs, though, you got to take care of the feral hogs. Jesse, I want to hear your mm, rebuttal. Yes. Uh, well, what I was going to say is that I, I think there are some people that are surprised because they are usually tuned out of politics. And so when there's yeah. like a spectacle, they tune oh, in yeah. because it's kind of like watching a soap opera. So I'm sure there is that crowd that is surprised because they And don't... also like you have to like. OK, just yeah. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I, I was just going to. I'm, I'm sorry. Keep going. No, keep going. Um, (laughs) uh, so maybe I think for people who don't have a grasp on what systemic problems actually look like on the ground might be surprised, but I think the other half, the spectacle of outrage is organizers rightfully taking advantage of the opportunity Hmm. to harness that anger. Yeah. So I don't think it's as much of a shock as it might sound like. I think it's... I don't think a lot of it is really surprise. also. Kind of. But, like, let's say there is. Like, why is it still, like, the surprise? Because, like, it's basically the same as every major high-profile police shooting. We It's, like, the because same thing happening over and over again. Liberals believe in law and order. Yeah, liberals basically. believe in law and order. It's literally the theory of insanity of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting something different to happen. Yeah, but Joe, I was literally going to say the same thing. Like, liberals, like, they don't take things as an accumulation. They take things as, like, discrete events. Yeah, that's true. They believe in constructs like law and order and that, like, things will go the right way. And, like, this kid, there's clear evidence that he was, you know, guilty, was in self-defense, but, like... But the process. Yeah, the process, like... We gotta trust the process. That's why we still, like, liberals believe in the Supreme Court. I don't fucking know what to tell you, dude. You know? Yeah, I know. I have this discussion with my mother a lot. Yeah, same. It's like, I know these things, but it's one of those kind of things, like, I know it, but at the same time, it's so absurdly stupid that it's still like, why the fuck? I'm gonna try and start making myself a little bit more clear when I say stuff like, liberals believe in law and order. That is not to say that there is no form of justice that can be properly used in like a trial but in this country we don't have that yeah 
that's kind of what I'm driving at. We have a corrupt law enforcement system. We don't have a system that's aimed towards justice. We have a system that's aimed towards enforcement and punishment. Yeah, like if we sentenced people to, they had to like go to some community building thing that wasn't prison. But there's no profits there. If we could hand down sentences that allowed people to have experiences for their like emotional growth, that could potentially be a a working system of law and order. But even like the idea of law and order as people are fixed by punitive measures is a broken concept. It's very puritanical to say the least. Motherfucking VR. But at the same time, I mean, I love to see when, you know, like if some hedge fund dipshit embezzles a bunch of money, like... Yeah, there's a difference between making a mistake and, like, doing something because of circumstances and then, like, doing something that's, like, actually just bad, you know? Because you want to make more money. Yeah, exactly. If you already have, like, a position of power and you just use that to enrich yourself, like, you're doing something knowingly bad, like, go fuck yourself. But if you're just, like, some dude who, like, can't make ends meet, so you just, like, sell weed on the side, that's, you know, who cares? Yeah, I mean, weed is still federally classified... In the same category as heroin. Yup. <laughs> is meth in that category or is meth? I'm going to answer Scott's question just to demonstrate who benefits from the current classification hierarchy. Methamphetamine is Schedule 2, meaning there is a currently accepted medical use in the United States. Ovation Pharmaceuticals, a company founded by Jeff Aronin, current CEO of Paragon Pharmaceutical Capital, LLC, is the sole legal manufacturer and distributor of methamphetamine in the United States under the brand name Desoxin. Yeah, where's like Adderall in that hierarchy? Adderall is like a class two stimulant. Yeah, it's class two, which which, which is marijuana. One. Class one. Marijuana is. Oh my gosh. Wow. Schedule one. Yeah, it's as bad as fucking. It's as bad as crack and shit, dude. Like heroin, cocaine, marijuana are all class one. And then like. the bomb. ADHD medication is like class two. Lovely. (laughs) Benzos are schedule four. Oh my god. Benzos are significantly god. more dangerous than oh. most drugs. Like Yeah, that's fucking insane. I think they're the leading cause of auto accidents in uh Ireland oh, Lord. behind drinking and in Ireland specifically. The Irish love their benzos. <laughs> they really do though. Oh they're just putting like crossfit benzos and um alcohol. Oh yeah. It's, it's an over prescribed island. Why don't you do above and hit a hit a few back and then take a Xanax? That, 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 that is actually low-key well, kind of a it. thing there. What? Over prescription to benzos? No, like going to a pub, having some pints, and then benzos. Uh, they, they know how to fucking it. party, dogs. Obligatory note, please don't do this. Depressants like alcohol and benzodiazepines have a multiplicative effect when combined rather than an additive effect. Also note that acute withdrawals from alcohol and benzos can kill you. Whereas withdrawals from dissociatives, such as PCP and ketamine, stimulants, such as cocaine or amphetamine, opiates and opioids, such as morphine, heroin, oxycontin, fentanyl, cannot, though you'll probably want to die anyways. Oh, they really do. Talk about more shit. Uh, so, actually surprisingly good news for a change. Oh. I know, I I don't do this that often, but good news. Uh, Mm. Good news, everyone! The Teamsters uh, have their election to determine who will be the head of the union. Teamsters Union represents 1.3 million workers in the United States and Canada Mm. and uh, represents the roughly 320,000 UPS workers. UPS Uh, has the... uh, largest private sector union contract in the entire country so like in terms of like labor anything going on with ups is very important because that's the largest contract in the country and the teamsters for democratic union candidate sean o'brien who happens to be the leader of my old local local 25 was just elected with about two-thirds of the vote to be the next president of the teamsters union he was elected on like the Teamsters for a Democratic Union slate, which is like the left wing faction inside the Teamsters. Mm-hmm. And this first time the left within the Teamsters have had power since like the late 90s. Can I ask you a question? When were you a Teamster? Uh, 2018. What were you doing? Were you I was UPS? working uh, in a UPS warehouse in uh, Linfield. Okay, carry on. Carry on. Carry like, on. Like I just was curious meat. for some context, sir. You give me a little context for treats. So. Like what vultures eat. Carry on. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. So what? this is a uh, the UPS <laughs> part is important to like how O'Brien was able to win by so much. They used a lot of the anger around the most recent UPS contract because it was absolute dog shit. It was a fiasco, really. I actually voted against the contract because I was around when it happened. We took a 90% uh, strike authorization vote before the contract oh. negotiations. And then the national union leadership, which was we got headed by center. Jim Hoffa, was... Yeah, Jimmy Hoffa's son was the president the second, of the team. Yeah, the second time. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the, not the, you know. Yeah, yeah. not the other guy. Uh, Isn't so, Christopher? No, uh, James. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Yeah, 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 James P. Hoffa. Uh, Junior wanted to... Uh, 80 years old. In- implement a second the other year one, for the drivers. Scott. What are you talking about? <laughs> His son, Jimmy Hoffa's son, oh. was the second Jimmy yeah. Hoffa that yeah, was... Yeah, James P. Hoffa, who is now 80 years old. Yeah. He's born he in 41. Oh, so, was? at the time in 2018... <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't make that up. <laughs> <laughs> No, That's I for just... later in the show. Getting back on track. I thought you were referring to the dead one. All right. No. Okay. This so one died when he was 62. One. Yeah, he was shot can... in the head by Robert De Niro. That's we what can happened. We, we'll get, we can delete. No, don't delete no, any of this. That. Yeah, but keep that. <laughs> keep that part in. <laughs> keep going, buddy. Sorry. So in 2018, Hoffa basically sided with the company in forcing concessions down the union's throat, That's implementing so a second tier for the UPS drivers, which is... The company had been wanting that for years, for obvious reasons. Uh, They're known in the contract as uh, 22.4s, or also known as hybrid drivers. They are part-timers who do a lot of forced overtime, and they get paid only $14 an hour to do the same work as the regular package drivers and get basically no benefits, even though they're doing the Hmm. same work. It's a a real shit deal, because the company isn't really hiring regular drivers anymore. They're just... Like, all the new hires since the contract was ratified are basically just hybrid drivers who get paid less than the regular guys do. And the warehouse workers, if memory served, under the contract, the minimum wage for warehouse workers across the country would be raised to $13 an hour for back-breaking work. God damn! Not enough wage. Give them more. And also, with record-setting inflation, as we'll get to. Yeah, like, 54% of us voted down the contract, but Hoffa, at the last second, moved the threshold needed to vote down the contract to two-thirds as it became clear that the company would not have enough of a threshold to be able to ratify the contract at 50 plus one. So a lot of that made it easier for this election for Teams for sure Democratic Union to be able to get their slate elected because all they had to do was just canvas and be like talking about the UPS contract and that had enough people pissed off that like O'Brien wins in a landslide. Yeah, just, hey, remember this? Yeah, exactly. And like the major hubs like New York, LA, O'Brien won in some areas with like 80 to 95% of the vote. Hmm. O'Brien won in every area except for Canada, but there were only like <laughs> 4,000 people who voted in Canada, Canada. for the Team Sue's election. So, where's the drop, dude? I, well, you have a drop for fuck Canada? Canada is such a joke of a country. There I was is. looking. <laughs> but uh, well, Brian says he wants to uh, get rid of the second tier and raise the starting pay for part time drivers 20 bucks an hour. Woo! Also, Give crack down money. on subcontracting. Give that money. I, I'm totally on board with this idea of trying to like organize amazon as Hell a priority yeah. for the union you don't get me i'm part, part of, the of the union, union. yep so it's good news yeah good the host news. of minion death cult is a ups driver in oh. washington state and he talks a lot about how fucked up his hours are the strobs oh yeah the, the hours for ups drivers really are fucked but also like the regular package drivers well i mean before the the last contract like everyone was a regular package drivers the money was good but, like, you were worked to death. Because UPS driving, uh, it's not the kind of, like, 9 to 5 job of, like, you have set hours. It's, like, you deliver everything in the truck. Yeah, like, if it takes you 12 hours to deliver all the packages, you're working 12 hours. If it takes you 16 hours, it takes 16 hours. Some days you have 8 hours of work. Some days it's closer to 16. I will say that, like, for the UPS drivers... Normally, their busy season, where they're f- basically fucked all of the time, is like right about now 
until about the second mm. week of January. But ever mm-hmm. since COVID, and that period of time is known as peak. But since COVID, it has been peak all year round for like the past year and a half. Damn. Drivers are working like 70 hours a week every single week. Yeah. Amazon had to make like a bunch of shell companies to do deliveries. <laughs> <sighs> Capitalism sucks, folks. I remember the first winter Amazon tried to do its own deliveries, and it was the sketchiest fucking thing ever. It was so hilarious because I was delivering for UBS that, that winter, and you'd see them every now and then. The drivers didn't have any like set uniforms; it was just like people, whatever, like whatever what they were wearing. They were driving around in white, almost entirely unmarked vans, where the only marking was like the. <laughs> The yellow uh, Amazon check mark that you could barely even see. So it, it pretty much looked they, like they were just driving in unmarked white vans, like something hmm. out of Silence of the Lambs. I got an Amazon delivery. There was no logo on the van. It just said in like I'm gonna watch that sans too. serif font that just said ABC. Oh, yeah, I remember those. That was hilarious. Amazon brings cargo. Amazon. It's the most last minute shit. <laughs> It was amazing because it took them like two years to figure out like how to have like a cohesive delivery unit that like, okay, we're all going to wear uniforms and drive marked vans now instead of like this weird like unmarked white van shit. Some of that That'd might be have creepy. been to to sort of be creepy, yeah. to uh, at least appear to be to like, oh my God, my brain just turned off in the middle of the sentence. You're trying to say they didn't want to yeah. seem like Amazon? Yeah. Well, I think they, I think, I mean, even for like, <laughs> well, let's just be real. We do not have any significant market regulations that constrain the size and scope of corporations like Amazon anymore. And it's not like there aren't levers that you set legislators could be pulling to Sorry. try and break up corporations like that. It's just it nobody fucking tries. <laughs> and ultimately, I don't think it would matter too much because all the telecommunications companies that got broken up merged back together in like a slightly different configuration. So, yeah. It was like, okay, we're going to break up AT&T now, but like Almost all of the pieces will, like, acquiesce back, back together to within, the... like, three or four decades. AT&T merged with so many companies that they were like, all right, fuck it. Let's just... at and Time gonna... Warner. Yeah. They're like, we already got all the technology. That We did the computer stuff. Then we did the we did the phone stuff. Fuck it. Let's <laughs> we just need do a little bit of everything. We want, a, we want, like, a flavor of the month. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll take it all. Let's have our comic book movie, yeah. But now we're hemorrhaging money because we bought all the things that are no longer profitable. It's not necessarily true because they get, like, all the intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never know. But that's going to be handy. Mm-hmm. Well, with movies, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's like an, an industry that's ripe for exploitation. Mm-hmm. The only major asset that at and currently has that actually makes money is, like, HBO, and that's basically it. Dog, HBO, what are... Like, HBO Max is, like, anyways, go on to the Joe Biden story. (laughs) So, uh, the U.S. decides, they see that gas prices are going up, and as a result, the president's approval rating is going into the tank because people can't afford to get full tank of gas. In fact, today was the first time I had a full tank of gas in about a month, because I couldn't actually afford to fill up the tank all the way. And what have they decided to do? Have they decided to implement price controls? informing like the major gas companies that like this is the maximum price you are allowed to set at the pump have they decided that they're going to start nationalizing part of the oil and gas industry because it's getting out of control actually the ftc opened up an investigation as to whether or not the oil companies are illegally yeah price gouging because the costs of refining the oil into gasoline has gone down about 25 percent in the last three years but the price at the pump has gone up by 50% in the past 12 months. So there's an obvious disconnect. Have they done any of these things? No. What is the solution? We're going to release 50 million barrels of oil into circulation. Hmm. We're going to make climate change even, even worse, worse for short-term gain. Hmm. Short-term relief to a problem that is systemic in nature. 
<laughs> Gee, that's never happened before. <laughs> yeah. Systemic in nature. Sorry. Slightly better than when ExxonMobil just burned all their fucking shit. Mm. It's the flip side of that. That's a very low bar. It's pri- price too low. Uh, burn. <laughs> price too price high. Price too high. Give us more. Um, more. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Don't have to pay. Just, you know. And the U.S.'s Looking decision to release all of these barrels of oil has caused several other countries to promise to release a combined six and a half million additional barrels of oil. So what it's do like, you great. Mean when you say release, what do you mean? From like the reserves. Okay. So these 50 uh. million barrels of oil are kept as part of what is known as the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is basically the U.S. government's like reserve of oil. In oh, case of emergency, strategic right now. It's what it says in the can or whatever. <laughs> when we run out of natural resources, like it's the shit that the billionaires get to use. Yeah, like that doesn't Pretty sound much. like this doesn't sound like a very like legitimate time to use that. So, huh? huh. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Well, are the billionaires like, in need? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the billionaires, the billionaires are unhappy about this because. This will cause a short-term drop in, in gas prices. Billionaires. And the top. they're oh, unhappy yeah. about 1%. short-term profit loss because hmm. our society is governed by companies who can't think past the oh. next quarterly earnings report. Did you guys hear that fart, you? No. Which Did one? <laughs> I'm going to boost it in post. It was it was Carly. <laughs> oh, good uh, lord. Yeah, good. Okay. Sorry. You were saying, Joe? So... It's it's amazing how instead of doing a sensible thing, let's not do it right controls, now. We're just going to make the environment worse. Yeah, as Good if that's morning. a solution. Sunday morning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like they're actually lacking. It's the smell. Oil? Are they actually lacking oil, or is it just no? Okay, yeah. Cause so it's like <laughs> it's no. like it's not gonna. <laughs> like if you had <laughs> price controls, would more people like use more gas? The logic of, like, putting all these surplus barrels of oil into circulation is like, well, there's demand, but not enough supply. But, like, that's not going to change the fact that there's still a very high level of demand. Yeah, like, basically, what you could do instead is just chop the top of the profits (laughs) off for these oil execs. And then give it to people to buy more gas rather than allowing them to continue to profit Mm -hmm. and introducing more oil onto the market. But that's always the solution under capitalism because capitalism demands growth. It never Mm -hmm. demands shrink. (laughs) Never shrink, only growth. (laughs) Get big, no small. problem baby it's contributing to a lot of problems at once really mm-hmm. i mean one of them and i only Climate. learned this through reading the through the article is because of this i don't know how to refer to it other than speculative finance bullshit because oh! that's what it is mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like I mean, imaginary that category that yeah, most yeah. finance no, falls under now yeah yeah, yeah. it's like that's other rich people who are hoping term. that they would pump 100 million barrels into the market <laughs> were sad because it was only like 80 million or whatever. Yeah. And so as a result. This is basically like analogous to Bitcoin in the sense that you're just like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I was gonna you're say just NFT. hoping to make money off of it. Yeah. As a result, the price has actually increased because people were disappointed. They were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, we didn't get what we wanted. So fucking we're going to bid up again. Like we're going to bid up again. And now gas is at 340 a gallon. Woo! It's, sucks, it's almost guys. exactly the same thing that happened with the Treasury Department when they just fabricated a tr- like a trillion dollars, <laughs> and the, the there was like a teeny blip in the market, and then it died again. Wow. This is that, but the expense is uh, the climate this time. Yep. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> die. Ah! 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 <laughs> That's us dying. Yeah. Yep. Finance person goes sad, so I guess mm-hmm. the planet has to die yeah. a couple of years early now. If line not go up wall street mm-hmm. men said yeah well i've heard it i'm gonna put you the paraphrasing of it but like the stock market indexes are basically just paraphrase? like a, like interesting thing to say it's just basically a bunch of lines that are used as like a barometer for like rich people happiness mm-hmm. yeah i've heard that before 
rich people happy line go down. So now the rest of us have to suffer. <gasps> yeah. Talk about talk about that third news. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> in other news. Oh, and by the way. CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens. Oh, I just remembered. Have a federal jury the has concluded the that they fueled the opioid epidemic because yeah. mm-hmm. of how they were recklessly just pumping out pain pills with reckless abandon and then destroying several counties in Ohio as a direct result of this. More than just Ohio, but yeah. No, I mean in this legal case. Yeah, I'm just saying more than just Ohio, but yeah. I have kind of a hot take on this one. Hot take on the tip of his lips. So this is the first time like pharmacies have actually had to face lawsuits about this, but like it's been a problem for a while. So like it's kind of surprising it's taken this long to get to the pharmacies. Mm. Hot take. Give us your hot take. Um, I mean, as shitty as, you know, CVS and Walgreens are. Bullshit. Suing them isn't going to do anything. True. Also true. People are already addicted. All right. So I'm going to tell. don't care about a lawsuit. I'm going to explain from, for my, this was my experience when I was still using drugs. Uh, When I went into treatment as like a miner, like a coal miner. (laughs) No, when I was in the treatment, when I was like when I was like sixteen, seventeen, sit all over your face, you know, have one of those hats on with the light. Yeah, <laughs> the guys that were in there with me had reached the limits of their financial capacity. Basically, they couldn't afford to do oxycontin anymore. Oh no! And if you if you need the drug, you're gonna fucking do whatever you can to get money. So people. They either have to switch to a cheaper drug or they have to start doing more dangerous stuff to get money so that they can get the more expensive drug. And like when I went back into treatment, you know, a year later, it was all different people, but it was like I was just in rehab with like the same guys that had like decided to do that over the past year, like switch to heroin because it was cheaper. Does that make sense? That's crazy. It was like I just witnessed the disease progress, but it was in different people. And um, because a lot of these pharmaceuticals are generics, Hmm. I mean, I don't like saying this. I don't know how fucking Marxist it is per se, but... Controversy on the pod, folks. Like, I would rather have people picking up cheap generic painkillers at a pharmacy than doing whatever the fuck they had to do on the street so that they could shoot heroin. Um The bigger problem is that the manufacturers, like, particularly if they can squeeze every dollar possible out of their patents for particular release systems, like in the case of Oxycontin versus generic Oxycodone, they will convince doctors to write more prescriptions than is necessary and basically pushing painkillers on people. And I think it, it is more obvious and prevalent now because it's happening to white people mm-hmm. yeah it's tough to disagree with that but oh pharmacies are still complicit in that supply chain because they're still making some money even in the recent chapo episode they were talking about how like we're all kind of participating in this network of exploitation just as instruments of capitalism and like There are a handful of really rich people in the country, but because these companies are all folding into each other, we all essentially end up working for like the same, you know, few people. And capitalism itself is the driving force. It's like this nebulous living ideology in itself, even to the detriment of the descendants of the capitalists because their kids are going to have to live on a barren planet you know Mm -hmm. ain't no wealth gonna be to pass down at that point i've been saying this lately about uh the finance industry lately folks there's no profits to be made to the point where now a lot of finance like speculation is just boiling down to like finding new ways to like scam other people in the market and then claim it's profit yeah, Spax is basically that, where it's like, oh, we're just going to have a more opaque version of, like, the initial public offering, where we allow retail investors to get in, but they don't know anything about the initial public offering process, and so, like, all of the private equity firms are just going to still, like, keep investing early than getting out before, like, a company goes public, 
But by the time the retail investors all notice what's going on, they've already lost their, all their money. And we're mm. just going to call that profit. Or like crypto, where it's like, we're just hoping that there's someone like dumb enough behind you to buy in after you. So that like, you're not the idiot who lost out. Right. Um, what's that called? It's a Ponzi scheme. No, there's like a, a name for... Multi-level marketing? No. <laughs> like, because it's totally legal, there's a... There's a name for it. Fuck. Oh, you mean a hostile takeover? Yeah, but what's there's like a fucking like it's been that's been so normalized that that is now just like a part. It's like buying a company with the intention of gutting everything, firing everybody and consolidating all the positions into like a few useless corporate positions. And then yeah, liquidation. Reaching, yes. You're buying the company up to sell it for parts. OK, thank you, Joe. <laughs> This is why we have Joe. He knows better than us. Like, that's fucking legal. You know what I mean? That's just a normal part of capitalism. Mm. All right, this company is mine now. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's the system, baby. Even worse, it's mine now and nobody else's. We love You're it, all baby. fired. Fuck, get the fuck out of here, baby. Oh, you've been with this company for 50 years? Fuck you, baby. Yeah. It goes on like that. The phrase I was actually looking for was leveraged buyout market. In the United States, we have an entire market for already ultra-rich investors and private equity firms to get bank loans on a scale of billions of dollars for the purpose of buying up a company's stock, replacing management, selling off assets, and cutting jobs until operating costs are so low that the returns offset the cost of investment. This kind of scheme didn't even really exist until after World War II, and now it's a multi-trillion dollar industry. Any more news, Joe? Ah, uh, no, Any... that's it for today. That's it for today. Jesse, did you have a primer or anything? No. What I was going to do is... Oh, right. It's good timing, because we were just talking about the opioid crisis. Uh, the Mental Health Working folks. Group, we didn't host it. Uh, the Health Commission hosted it, but... Hava primarily was the organizer. Woo! So thank you, Hava. I'll put I'll put applause in the post. Hava, say take a bow. Say take a bow. Can you hear that, listeners? It's a loud bow. Uh, I don't have. Do you have a sound effect for for that? Uh, uh, do you like no. the woo whoop? Uh, like a uh, I don't know. No. All right. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, fine. that's a bell. We'll call that a bell. Uh, so I took notes during this training, this Narcan training, and I'm just going to read them because it's it's very I'm important read information. Them. Read them and beat them for anybody who I was going to say for anybody who like lives in an area where you could just anybody. potentially yeah like it's literally everywhere now. Yeah, so, I mean, um, no longer city problem. So yeah, we did the Narcan training on November 10th. So what Narcan is is essentially a delivery system for a drug called naloxone, which is an opiate antagonist. If the opioid receptors in the brain are saturated, the Narcan naloxone will kick out, I put in air quotes, kick out uh, the narcotic and replace it. Naloxone has the capacity to sit in the receptor sites for like 20 to 90 minutes, after which the Naloxone will sort of drift out of those receptor sites and the narcotics will drift back in and re-induce intoxication. So the person will nod out again. Fentanyl is 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine and tolerance is achieved more quickly than it is with heroin because the psychoactive effect, although intense, is not as prolonged. Users will often combine fentanyl with benzos and alcohol intentionally, but now pressed pills, which are presumed to be pure, also contain fentanyl. I mean, essentially everything does, or it, it can. Sounds great. Yeah, it's fucking, I mean, like, I have said this before, I cut this out of the pod the last time I talked about it because it was fucking depressing, but, like, a lot of people have died. That it, I've personally gotten acquainted with a lot of addicts that just couldn't get clean, couldn't stay clean, and they're dead now. And uh, fentanyl has played a significant part in that, but... I'm not going to get like mad at, you know, fentanyl. It's it's addiction. It sucks. Um, I have notes in here about Suboxone. My cats are running around again. Suboxone is uh, different from Narcan. It's like a longer term. It's a combination of an opioid blocker and a partial agonist. 
So it's extremely difficult to overdose on, but it also prevents, in most cases, somebody from getting intoxicated enough to like die. So it's often prescribed as a buffer, quote unquote buffer, particularly for people who are like transitioning out of a prison cell or detox, but it is different from Narcan. So signs of an overdose, an opiate overdose, somebody might have cold or blue lips and fingers, faint or absent or suppressed breathing, and there's something called a death rattle, which basically indicates that the person's central nervous system isn't working properly. So if you hear a rattling sound from somebody who is attempting to breathe, that is indicative of an overdose. If you want to attempt to revive to someone who might be overdosing, after, you know, pat them a little bit, make sure they're like, you know, alive, responsive. If not, you can try a sternum rub, which is you firmly massage your knuckles in the center of the chest to try and elicit a response. Because that's like, as humans, we have like a natural reflex. We will try and defend ourselves. So if somebody is nodding out most of the time, that will bring them back to consciousness. If that does not elicit a response, that's when it's time to fucking whip out the Narcan. So you want to remove it from the package, and the administration directions are on that package. First step is you hold the device with your thumb on the bottom of the red plunger and two fingers on the nozzle, like one on either side. Place and hold the tip of the nozzle inside either nostril. You get to choose the nostril. That's the fun part. (laughs) Uh, Until your nozzle in the nostril. It's a real pick-your-own-adventure game. Yeah, it is. I was about to say that. Pick your own nostril. (laughs) You really don't know how it's going to end um, <laughs> until your fingers touch the bottom of the patient's nose. And then the last step is press the red plunger firmly <laughs> and that'll release the full dose into the nostril. And then after you administer the Narcan, you're probably going to want to attempt rescue breathing and that will facilitate circulation of the drug throughout someone's uh, respiratory system. So to do that, you're going to lay the patient flat, tilt their head back and ensure that the airways are clear. Same thing, you know, it's like CPR. Inhale directly into the person's mouth. You should be able to see their chest rise in response if you're doing it properly. And you can use a cloth barrier, like a shirt or whatever, to prevent direct contact if you're worried about that. Continue to do that. And then I would say give it two or three minutes. Look for signs of overdose reversal. And if you don't see any signs of overdose reversal, if it doesn't seem like the person is returning to consciousness... Um, you can administer a second Narcan dose in the other nostril. So, I mean, it's a choose your own adventure, but your options become more limited uh, if <laughs> it's contingent upon if the person is dying or not. Um, I would say, I don't want to say like call the cops. If there's a, a, a way to, to summon emergency services where you explicitly get a medical team where you can get EMS, do that. The guy who did our training said that Massachusetts has a good Samaritan law, wherein, especially now that overdoses are happening to more and more like white people, you are supposed to be free from the threat of being arrested if emergency services is trying to save your life. But yeah, if you can, you know, <laughs> you can make some attempt to, to ensure that the person you're trying to help will not be arrested. Yeah, why not do that? I double-checked, and I don't think that the Boston Emergency Services team or BEST actually helps with overdoses. But, you know, if you've got, if you've got a strategy, use it. Burp, man. Are you Thank sure you. Hava's audio is fine? Thank you, Hava. Uh, yeah, it sounds like you're on a different... It sounds weird. Yeah. Well, man, it's it. I don't know. That was why I asked if you wanted to... You're on your it. headset? Yeah. Yeah, so weird, wild stuff, folks. Okay. <laughs> Anyway. All right. I got a couple more points here. They have a standing order for Narcan in Massachusetts. So you can go into any pharmacy and ask for it. And if you have Mass Health, they will pay for it. Hmm. Narcan is unique in that it is a prescription drug, but the prescription is not for the individual who holds the Narcan. And you probably won't have a problem if you ask for it. But if they ask why, just say, like, I live in an area where a lot of people struggle with addiction and I just want to, you know, keep some in my purse or whatever to be safe. Check the back of the Narcan container for an expiration date. We were struggling with this. Like we were trying to figure out as a working group, if Narcan expires as it is listed 
and I was very suspicious. I suspected that uh, there it, there was some attempt to get people to purchase more than necessary because they were throwing out non-expired Narcan early, and that does appear to be the case. So the time from manufacture date to expiration date, it must be proven to be good for twice that length of time. So y- you should be able to to keep Narcan for a couple of years if it's stored in a temperature stable environment. I presume room temperature is the stable temperature. <laughs> uh, Depends on the see, room. like this is the shit that you know we we this is stuff that like we're not going to actually be able to know because it's in the manufacturer's interest to kind of keep people in the dark about that so that they buy more. But um, it seems that if you, you know, if you keep it so long as the temperature doesn't fluctuate too much, it should still be good. The needle exchange, a hope at seven, seven, four mass Ave mass Ave at Albany gives out like clean kits, needles and free Narcan for anybody who might be interested. And the last point is, be aware that like if you Narcan somebody, they're Narcan. probably going to be disoriented and uncomfortable uh, when they come they out of the overdose. You. They might. I mean, mm. probably not. But I don't know. Narcan essentially what it does is it induces like immediate withdrawals. So some people, especially if they have a, I don't want to say a death wish, but if somebody's life is Good Lord. as it is with many people who struggle with addiction, if it surrounds the idea of staying high, staying intoxicated as long as possible, it's going to be really uncomfortable for somebody to get hit with withdrawals. So if they're distressed or whatever, that's why. So if you can be sympathetic to that, that would be sweet. (laughs) There you go. Thank you. Folks, go out and get some Narcan. Keep each other safe. Yeah, you can go to the any pharmacy and ask for it, and they are supposed to give it to you. You may be limited on how many you can get at once, but apparently you can sometimes just go leave and then go back to the same pharmacy the next day and get more. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you have mass health, you can get it for free. Uh, if you have a different insurance, you may have a copay. If you pay in cash, you will probably be paying sixty to hundred dollars each. Oof. So probably try to get it through insurance if you can. I have mass health, so I need to just take as much advantage of this as I can. <laughs> I keep forgetting to get some. But next time I'm at the pharmacy, that's what I'm going to do. Hell yeah, do it. I don't know how that's going to sound in post, but I believe I heard most of what you said. It might sound weird, folks, okay? It's going to be yeah. a rough episode. Sorry, guys. If it's weird, fucking... It's been an interesting one. Deal with it. Just go, baby. Okay. Love you. All right. Here's what I got. Uh, oh, yeah. You uh, can't make this <laughs> stuff up with Comrade <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm Hava. You can't make this shit up. Ooh. Okay. This is a story about a dog. This is this a story, is of, a story dog. of a dog. Who <laughs> <laughs> is very wealthy and technically owns a, a mansion that used to belong to Madonna. But now he's selling it. His name is Gunther the Sixth. And he is a German shepherd. Gunther Part Six, Leonard Part Six. Yeah. Famous Bill Cosby movie. Famous fall. And the best part actually is that Gunther the Sixth inherited this very large home, which has eight bedrooms uh, and a pool, I believe. He inherited it from his grandfather, who was also a dog, who was named Gunther the Fourth. That does not surprise me that his grandfather was a dog. Yeah. You mean you would hope? Yeah. Inherited wealth amongst dogs is a major problem. That's all you can do is hope. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs can inherit okay. property now. This is this is an interesting. Yeah, dog. It's not yeah. new. Oh, it's news to you. I see. <laughs> yeah, you're man. one of today's lucky ten thousand. If you're like part of the estate, if you are a member, if you can't make this of stuff, an estate, then you could be like a fucking tree and inherit money. It's true. And in in fact, it sounds like Gunther the Fourth was not even the dog that inherited this 
place from a human. It was his father, who you might guess. Gunther the Named fifth? Gunther the third. the third. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When she died, a uh, German third. countess, Carlotta Liebenstein, left the place to Gunther the third in 1992 when she died. And then basically for the past 30 years, I guess now, holy shit, yeah. a bunch of handlers but... have up to maintain a jet-setting lifestyle for all these dogs. What, they're making the dogs pollute the putting the dog on jets? Yeah, pretty much. Yes. They, <laughs> they go to Milan. So rich people who don't actually like any other human being who is so rich and has nothing better to do with the money is just willing their estates to pets. I don't see anything wrong with that, honestly. No, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. You want, like, I would do it. When I die, I'm gonna. I yeah. I would totally give my money to my cats. Yeah. But then again, I don't have very much. Maybe if I had more, more than I would... you do, Joe. Ouch. I was kidding. <laughs> I love you. Joe. Yeah. Ultimately, the way I feel about this is that I'm actually okay with it. No, I'm just fascinated by it because I'm just learning of this now. I'm trying to like really? conceptualize what this would be like. Kings and queens have been leaving shits to pets forever. Come on, man. Basically, it just means that, like, the Ooh. the dog is, like... Ooh. Well, the dog inherits the money, but it's enacted by, like, humans who will then, like, you know, take care of the dog or whatever pet it is. Yeah. Yeah. They handle him. This just makes me think of this Soviet cartoon from, like, 1964. <laughs> that I saw, like, a, a history class that was, like, depicting, like, the evils of greed and capitalism of, like, this old woman leaves, like, her wealth to a dog... And then the dog starts becoming more and more of a capitalist until it's like walking on two legs, like wearing clothes. That's a true story, <laughs> by the way. There are a lot worse things you could do with like a billion dollar fortune than like give it to a dog. Sure, there are also exactly. a lot of better things you could do, but there's like, you, you at least they're not like, you know, um, I don't know, this, buying this like a, a diamond mine in, in South Africa or something, you yeah. know? I think that like Ooh, making a dog happy... Out. Is like a pretty good use of money. Like, make a dog happy, make, make that dog dog's happy. son happy, make, make that dog dog's happy. son happy. And then there's also six cats that live there, apparently. Oh, but I don't I think the cats... I think the cats are tenants. The cats do not own the house. Oh, the, the cats are renters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cats so are yeah. the only one who owns it. He's a good boy. It, interspecies classism. What happens if the dog, like, misbehaves? Well, he, he does gets, somebody train the dog? Yeah, he's he does daily obedience training. Oh, that's very with good. His handler, so he's a real good boy, and he gets lots of nice, nutritious food, and he gets to go to Milan, Lucky dog. and the Bahamas. See, and when he's, get. do they determine that the dog likes Milan for some reason? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. They say, <laughs> he, I don't think he the like, dog has any say in it. Seemed happy when he was there, so let's just bring him there. <laughs> It's not Why clear, not? but apparently when whenever he is on his trips, he gets to dine out at restaurants every evening. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's a lucky okay. fucking dog. Half for him. Yeah. Good pooch. He Was doesn't it have to Reginald eat Reginald the Six? What was his name? Gunther. <laughs> Gunther Reginald the Six? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he sleeps on a... I was half right. <laughs> he sleeps on a what? A red bel- velvet bed. Oh, that so overlooks. oh, velvet. That's awful for cleaning. Well, somebody gets paid to clean it. Yeah. I'm sure. The dog <laughs> sleeps like a fucking king, queen, I or whatever. I hate velvet. It is. Velvet's awful. Okay. Maybe the dog fucking loves velvet. Why is it you feel the velvet against velvet, Sarah? The texture. The texture. It's terrible. Yeah. The if dog you had a fur coat. It's great for my paws. Do you think that if you were covered in fur, you'd feel differently? And yet my complaints about the new orange line cards are viewed as irrational. See how it is. I thought you said you liked them. Oh, no, that's it's not irrational. Name. It's like, we can't say like, like somebody who like doesn't like the taste of like, I don't know, Brussels sprouts to be like, you're irrational. You're, you're wrong about how your body is feeling. You're wrong about your sensory experience. All I'm saying is that the dog well, that, would love that's it. That's actually what I would. And that's all I'm that's saying. That's largely where all of my complaints like are based in. 
Jesus fucking Christ. This what is the I... most asinine conversation. <laughs> well, have you ever I, heard I was... of like sensory issues? I do actually have sensory issues. I yeah, also so have sensory issues I... and I think this is I, the most was... asinine <laughs> conversation. I wasn't being serious when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, you can geez, cut it. You can cut it all out. out. If you need proof, my mom had to cut every it, year. She had to cut the toes know. off of my shoes because I could not wear sandals. I thought you were going to say cut toes off your feet or something. Yes, every year, every year she would back. cut my toes off, back. and they would. Yeah, it would, <laughs> I would spend nine nine months or so waiting. <laughs> I would drink my, uh, my spirulina, plenty of milk, yeah, yeah. and. <laughs> llama milk and i would massage the tips where the toes the nubs just the tip just the tip mm-hmm. you know come so to the story were, books eventually they would return the to their former glow and glory and would they she make would, a little pop she'd, noise she'd bring out the garden growing? shears again and i'd be like mom <laughs> she'd be like i gotta do it honey gotta do i'm it. sorry this is the strangest <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird episode, it's folks. It's the most yeah. wonderful um, time. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right I haven't right. gotten like enough sleep for months now. Toes will be clipping and for hearts a couple will be of days, but it hasn't caught up to me yet. I think it's catching up. It's catching me. It's catch catching up. It's catching. It's on my heels. Catching you. All right. My name is Scott, the sweaty wife, fan camp, SoundCloud. Uh, Playing Brian uh, Clamp. Uh, Instagram, Clamp. Twitter, and Letterboxd. I watched Spencer today. It's a pretty good movie. Joseph. I am Joe. You can find me on the internet, but I'm not really there. It is an illusion. Yeah, it's the illusion of choice. It is the illusion <laughs> of choice. The internet is the illusion of choice. This is also true. Uh, Sarah, go. I'm Sarah. Have a lovely evening. That's all. <laughs> evening, morning, afternoon. I was so proper about it. <laughs> I'm expecting you to like make a joke, and you're just like, "Hello, my name is Sarah." <laughs> well, I don't have anything else to offer. That's so at least all. I have manners. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Indubitably, I wish. I, <laughs> I do wish all the dear listeners a pleasant evening. I dare Are say. Are you trying to do David Cameron? Mm. That's kind of what it sounds like. It's hilarious. I don't have any voice. No, I'm trying I to do doing... Sarah. No, I'm like doing Sarah... a Sarah impression. Sarah's impression kind of sounded like David Cameron. It was hilarious. Well, okay, if anything, well, it was it was unintentional because I, I don't I do voices. Your soft, cute fur. <laughs> I'm here for you, baby. All right, who's oh. the next person to talk? That's a voice. <laughs> I know. I don't know what it is, though. It's just a voice I made up. Just voice. Go, it's just voice. It's just voice, folks. This is just a voice I made up. <laughs> if you think about it, every voice that we use is a voice we make up. Hi, I'm David Lynch. Um, I'm actually Kava, and you should go to readingsbykava.com, mm-hmm. and it's spelled C-H-A-V-A is my name, and uh, <gasps> I can't read your mind, but I might be able to find someone I for you. And, your mind. I can read your mind. And possibly read theirs. Your luck. And you your lord, Atanagra. His eyes uncovered! That's right. His ice uncovered. Oh! And he's Darmok Exchion! I'm Jesse. <laughs> I'm not even going to plug my SoundCloud because it's been so long since I've uploaded. Y'all have a good but... time. Yo, shut the fuck up. Loud. You can hit up comrade-rosie.org. <laughs> Select the Getting Involved tab and choose one of our mutual aid groups to donate your time, labor, and or money to because people really need your help right now. And I have a slam recommendation. Recommend. Recommends. Recommendation. 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 I'm also unprepared for this. I don't know how the fuck it happens every goddamn time. Hmm. But you have so much slams to choose from. I want to talk about happy things, man. I know, but... I have, just out. I've been putting, yeah. I've been putting you together. You change, man. It used to be about the music. I've been putting together a playlist. I bought so much merch. Not so much. But it is expensive because it's getting shipped from Taiwan. Taiwan? What kind of merch? Which is not a country, okay? I'm just kidding. Sorry. I don't sorry, know. I said something. Sorry the country. fuck I said something. It's a country if you wanted well, to. Shut be, the fuck up, okay? When you right. bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? So your your uh, your slam recommendation for the squirrel, squirrel, 
Slam deck. The slam, the slam recommendation slam for Slam recommendation is. for the week. <laughs> it's the album called Abnormality. And the band is Decomposition of Entrails. Thank you, Squirrel. And I believe they are from Kishton. The former Soviet nuclear wasteland. Hmm. Pretty metal. Good holiday destination right there. Yeah. Yeah. The squirrel like slams if she likes had to pick a slam, what would she want? She would pick Yamo. She would pick that song by High Monotony. Yeah. That has the really long title about goat fucking. I want you to like sometime just just say here's your slam recommendation. It's like something like I don't know, like like Flight of the Bumblebees or something. Flight of the Bumblebees. Just it's like this not even Flight of the Bumblebees. Screw, get the fuck off my dick. Slide of the Cumblebees and go to patreon.com. Slide of the Cumblebees. I found the I found the full name for that song. And it is, quote, some necrophiles having song. sex with naked autop... Fuck, that's a different song. Necrophiles there's having the sex goat with one. naked autopsies? No, there's a goat one. Wow. You've heard about autopsies, folks. Well, there's a hey, uh, grandfather. Time some naked ones. Huh? You gonna get naked for your grandfather? You gonna get naked and peg your grandfather? Oh, okay, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Who doesn't want to get naked and peg their grandfather? It's stealing a young, sexy goat from an angry farmer... In <laughs> order what? to in order to have sex with it, <laughs> while, scroll, that's I'm sorry, it's still scroll while what unexpected <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> far- <laughs> has quite farmer quite a taste dismembers while well, farmer dismembers your <laughs> your body your body. With your testicles, your genitals, a blunt machete. <laughs> yeah, that's what the title is. Sorry, I had to wait for it to scroll. <laughs> that's, oh. the title. that's the title of the episode. Anyways, go to. Oh, please, I hope not. No, it's not gonna be. Go to patreoncom slash credulity for all of the bonus material. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Fucking. MySpace, Clapper. Clapper, Dapper, Instagram, TikTok. What do we know? What's our name now on Clapper? Well, now it's Epic. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again? Excuse me? Finally. It's like, uh, you sound about as loud as, as Carlene does when she's just like in, in the other room talking. <laughs> Say it again? <laughs> I said it's epic incredulity now. We're epic incredulity on Clapper. I am sorry. Oh, man. Sorry for laughing so hard. Just, just, oh, man. It's been a long night. A I've had a lot of technical difficulties. Jesse's going to have to cut out a lot. And every week we say Batankto and we love you. Batankto. That's your epoch. No, I love the little Hava voice. Little Hava love voice. <laughs> Aww, it's so cute. It's like Thumbelina. Little Hava <laughs> Ninth, because you are from the ninth planet. So Gideon, oh, the ninth. Stupid. We no, might have. Not. We might have nine major planets in the solar system. I think it's stupid. Whatever.
<laughs> it doesn't matter. You think Anyways. it's stupid that we might have a ninth planet? No, I think it's cool that we have nine nine planets. I'm not I, saying I, we do. I'm um, saying we might. Um, there's, which science, is there's scientific evidence for it. I want but, there to be more planets that we can colonize. But it I could mean, also possibly be explained Earth's by the die. gravitational Fuck effects Earth. of Fuck this ball. like Fuck the um, this Kuiper ball. Belt. Maybe. Kuiper Belt. Kuiper Maybe. Belt. I like that word, Kuiper Belt. It's still, it's up for debate. Well, folks, you're going to have to tighten your Kuiper Belt. Tune in next week when we find out if it's a if it's oh, real plan no. or not. We're Save not going to know until we time. identify it. Save I know, it's like, kidding. Channel. It's one of the great mysteries of yes, the solar system. Let the mystery be. Yeah. Anyway, I want to go get off this done. so that I can read this book. Right, right, we're going to end this so Sarah can get off. I got to get off. Sarah's got to get off.